and store visits, catalog sales. This is a little bit more advanced and it depends on like what type of business you're in. So I've actually never used those um, just because I'm not in that type of business. But if you're used, you're working with like a physical location, like store visits obviously are gonna be huge or catalog sales, that's probably gonna be related more to e-commerce. All right, so let's just say traffic right here. And then we can give the campaign a name. So we'll just say demo traffic campaign, all right? So come over here and just really quick back, I'll just show you. Um, let's just click back right here. You can set a limit to the campaign saying, hey, I don't wanna spend any more than 200 bucks, 500 bucks, whatever, or 50 or whatever the number is. But I, I typically don't do that. I just kind of keep my eye on the campaigns and watch them. So we'll just hit continue here. Okay, so the campaign, so like we've got the three different pieces of the campaign, which is kind of like the overall, um, the highest part of the pyramid, I guess. Then you've got ad sets where you can have multiple ad sets within the campaign. Okay, and then the ad right here. So your campaign is the objective. Do you want to people to watch videos, traffic, get leads? What, what do you want to happen? Then your ad set, this is where it gets into the targeting of finding like what's the audience, like what's the demographic you want to target, what's your budget. You can see right here, they break it down. They've actually, they changed this about a year ago and they made it really simple to kind of see all the steps like your objective. Okay, now the, the tra okay, it's traffic. Um, who do you want the audience to be? Where do you want to be placed? Do you want to be on your mobile phone, on desktop, on Instagram, on all these different platforms? And then your budget, so it's like, hey, do you want to spend $5 a day? Do you want to spend $100 a day? Like, how much do you want to spend, okay? So over here as we come down, and we can give this a name too, so we'll just say demo um, traffic ad set. And then you can, I, I typically would like at this point to just give it a name based off the audience, right? Which we don't know yet, because I'm just kind of creating this on the fly. But it's kind of cool because you see like the potential reach of what you've got so far and we'll break it down you'll see how this number right here is 200 million how as we go through and break this down it'll shrink but you're getting more narrow more specific okay so when i'm running a campaign if it's if it's like a national campaign like all across like the us or canada or whatever country you live in i like to get a few hundred thousand people in that campaign because facebook works better with more data okay so like the bigger the audience the bigger it work the better it works however if it gets too big if it's getting to like three four five million um, sometimes you've got to like nail in your, your target a little bit better if it's like a super broad market then great like if you're selling I don't know like uh, weight loss stuff because that's a pretty broad market but if you're like in more of a specific niche, you probably want to stick around like the one to two million on the higher end, right? That's at least what I've seen. But then if you're doing like local ads, obviously it's kind of based off of how many people live in your town, in your city, right? If like you live in Chicago versus, I don't know, like some small town in South Dakota, right? Like you're gonna have a lot fewer people, but you don't want to be reaching out to people in North Dakota because it just is not gonna be within that right demographic, okay? so. Come down here, traffic, I just leave this here. Nice thing is some of the stuff you don't really even have to touch. It's it's not like it's super important. So offer, I don't do anything there. And then custom audiences, this is a little bit advanced, so we'll hit that in another video. And then for locations, let's say let's say this is let's just say this is a local ad, okay? We're running it for a local, whether uh, we'll say a real estate agent just because um, that's I <laughs> work a lot in the real estate space. And the mortgage space so let's say okay we're gonna come down here and we'll say um, where do we want to be in today Orlando Florida okay so we'll type in Orlando Florida and look at this they went from 200 million down to 2 million people right here now what if I'm running a local ad this locations with this drop down it, it by default is gonna say everyone in this location but I typically would want to do people who live in this location Okay, because it's like, hey, I just want people to live in this location. And that's good for real estate. But if you're doing like for a restaurant, and you just want everyone in that location because if they're visiting, it doesn't matter if they're visiting, you want to be able to target them as well. Or you can do piece people recently in this location. So if they were there, but they're not there anymore, or people traveling in this location. So like if you're like running an ad for more tourist type stuff, um, you could do that as well. So for this one with real estate, we'll just say people who live in this location. And then, you can see that that narrowed it down to 1.5 million because Orlando is kind of a touristy spot. 
right? So now what we can do is we can go through and say, hey, I only want it with people in the current city. Okay, so which that's gonna nail it down to 880,000. Or you can say, hey, I wanna do more of a radius. Okay, so you can go up to 50 miles or down to 10 miles. So just because this is a little bit bigger city, right, we can do a 10 mile radius. Okay, so now we're going down. And as far as the age range, you gotta kinda of think of like, okay, your target demographic, like how old are they? Like somebody, if we're doing real estate, is looking to, to find someone that's looking to buy or sell a home, an 18 year old's probably not gonna be in that demographic. So I typically like to go up to at least like a 25, 26, 27, something like that. And so you can see how you're narrowing down uh, this as well. You can go through, you can type in languages. It's like if you only wanna work with people that speak English, or you could say, hey, I wanna work, I know there, it's a big Hispanic market in that area, so you could just say, hey, I want Spanish. Um, so you can kinda of see it's 220,000 people, or you can just say, hey, you know, I, I'll work with, it doesn't matter what language they speak, they, they live in the US, they probably speak a little bit of English, so I'll just leave it at that. So I, I'll typically, just because I speak English, I'll just put that in. Now, guys, this is where it gets pretty cool right here, okay? The detailed targeting. Okay, so the detailed targeting, you can do some really cool stuff here. So um, what I like to do, you can go through and browse. You can browse by demographics. So somebody's education, okay? It's education level. They've got a college degree or they've just high school or they're in college. They're in high school. They've got a master's degree. So you can get pretty, like, and obviously this is not always something that you have to go through and choose. But sometimes, depending on your ad you're creating, this can be really helpful. So it's just good to know some of these different things that are in here. Or financial, you can say, hey, I only wanna hit higher income people. So people that are making over half a million dollars a year, okay? Or I can target the lower income or like kinda of like the middle income or something like that. Or saying, hey, net worth, okay? Because if you got like a high value real estate property for sticking with this, you, you probably, like somebody that's only like has a $100,000 net worth, might not be able to afford a five million, well, they can't afford a $5 million property, okay? So that's kind of cool right here. And then also, I just wanna hit some of these things because these are like, when I like found some of these stuff, some of these things in here, I was like, wow, there's a lot of stuff you could do. So I don't wanna just open up your guys' eyes and your mind to seeing some of the different things that we can do here. All right, so you can do home ownership, which is big for obviously real estate, mortgage. Um, you can say, hey, I'm looking for people that are first time home buyers, home type, life events, um, interests. You see like, okay, you, you want people like, there's one where, let me find this. There's one, oh, behaviors, I think it is, okay? Where it talks about people's purchase behavior, right? This right here, so people that are like more likely to make big purchases online if you're doing like e-commerce type stuff. Uh, see these buyer profiles, coupon users. That, like, it's crazy how much data Facebook has because Facebook not only has the data that you give them, but, through Facebook's pixel, they can actually track what sites you're going to, they know what, what links you're clicking on, what ads you're clicking on, so they've actually got a lot, a lot, a lot of data on you, okay? Because some people a lot of times are like, well, how do they know that I like I like skiing, I don't like any of the skiing pages, but you know, maybe you're clicking on those, those ads or something like that. So they've got, I mean, I'm not gonna go through all these, but they've got tons of things down here, or you could just say, hey, um, they're interested in real estate, you could just type that in. Okay, so right here, interests or behaviors, either one of these. The difference between interests and behaviors, interest is basically they, they've liked something related to real estate on Facebook. Behaviors is kind of like they've more acted upon something, like they that's more of like they clicked the link or something like that. So anyway guys, you guys could get lost in this forever. I'm not gonna dive in super deep um, more on this just because we've already, I feel like, hit that pretty well. So adding a connection type, this right here, I don't always really do this, but you could say, hey, I want them to be people who like, I want to, I want to just target people who like my Facebook page already, so it's like that's kind of your warm audience. Or, if you want to like expand a little bit, but well you know how on some of the ads it says, hey, um, so and so, like one of your friends also likes this page, this is where you can go through and do that. So you can say, hey, friends of people who like your page. Or if you want to just expand and get new people, say, hey, only people, exclude people who like my page because this is not for those who like my page this is only for new people coming in okay so now coming down um what we can do here so automatic placements a lot of times they have this here by default 
I like to do edit placements. And just so you can see like all the different places we can have these ads, you can have it on the, the news feed. So this mobile and desktop used to be separate and now it's just one and the same. If we want to make it just on mobile or just on desktop, right here on device types, it says all devices recommended, which I usually leave it at that, but you can say only on mobile devices or only on desktop computers. Okay, so that's just something really quick there. And then um, as we're going down here, I like to just typically leave it on the Facebook news feeds and uncheck everything else, okay? Just because I've seen the best results with that. However, I just wanted to show you some of the different places you can have these ads, okay? So you can have it on their instant articles, which is kind of like a newer blogging type platform. In stream videos, this is kind of like what uh, YouTube's already been doing, having like the streaming videos before a video. You know, right column, you guys have seen that on your desktop, top right. Lots of times you get cheaper ad space for that just because it not as many people click on that. However, it could still convert extremely well. Um, and then right here, this is where you do it on Instagram. Okay, Facebook owns Instagram. And so if you wanted to show on Instagram as well, you can say, hey, I want to show it in the news feed or at the very top on the stories. Okay, so that's kind of a cool little feature there. And then you've got all these different ones. You know, if you want to do Messenger and say, hey, I want them to click and go to Messenger, or you can actually have it uh, an ad in essence pop up in that person's Messenger box, okay? Which is kind of crazy, right? Okay, now just scroll down here, guys. Um, I, I typically don't really touch this right here. And then as far as the budget, you can do a daily budget. So I want to spend five bucks a day or a lifetime budget. Just saying, hey, only want to spend $35, $100, $50, whatever it is. I typically just like to do a daily budget, okay? And you can start out at whatever number, whatever suits your budget, right? Now, if you have an audience of like 730,000, you can start at like a higher number. Like you could start te technically, you know, let's say 50 or $75 a day. I like to start normally like around 20, $25 a day if I have like a, a massive, massive budget. But if you're watching this video, you're probably more of a beginner. So if you start around like the five to $10 range, that's probably just, that's perfect, right? So we come in here and then this is, this is something that's, that's cool. Like what I like to do sometimes is when I start a new ad campaign, I like to give it the whole entire day. So like, Right now, I think it's like 6 a.m. on a Saturday. I, 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 don't, I just woke up, I couldn't sleep, so I was like, I'm just gonna shoot a video. So I like to get the full day and let it run so that I can kind of like see the whole day's data. And so like, if it's, um, if it's right here, so we say, I like to start like maybe on a Monday, okay? And then we'll say, we'll, we'll start at 8 a.m., okay? And then since we're a daily budget, you, you can't have, um, a start end date and then still a daily budget or you can just say hey run my ad set continuously but I like to kind of like have a start date right and so um, oh that switched up on me so we come over here 8 a.m. because then so if that's Monday at 8 a.m. on Tuesday when I like kind of get to my ads and stuff around like 8 or 9 a.m. I can see a full day's worth now really quick quick tip if you guys are only spending ten dollars a day, I would give it probably three to four to five days before you go through and evaluate whether your campaign is working or not. Because sometimes it takes a little bit of time for Facebook to go optimize it and find the right people. And the more data they have, the better they'll be able to optimize it for you. Okay. So, despite popular belief, Facebook actually wants you to succeed because if you succeed, you spend more money with them and it's great for everyone, right? But at the same time, you gotta have a good ad that, that really is fitting with your target demographic, which we'll talk about ads here in a second. Okay, so um, that's kinda like what I like to do. So if it start on Monday from eight, uh, at 8 a.m., I could check it maybe that next Tuesday, just kinda get a quick glimpse of what it's looking like, but if I'm only spending $10 a day, maybe I'll wait till like Wednesday or Thursday to really determine if it's a winning ad or if it's, it's not, right? Okay, so coming down here, link clicks. I typically don't really mess with any of this, and that doesn't matter. It like doesn't matter what campaign I'm running. I just like leave it, just because lots of Facebook's basic um, stuff is kind of like already set to where you want to have it. Okay, so then we'll come over here to the um, the ad section, right? And you need a business page, um, whether it's your personal one, your business one, or whatever. 
you need a business page in order to run ads. You can't run it from your personal profile. Okay, now it, it's nice because it's super easy to go through and create your, your own Facebook page. So free, easy, takes like two seconds, all right? And then if you're also advertised on Instagram, you can connect your Instagram account right here. Right now, the cool thing is, is if you have an exist, like let's say you made a post on your Facebook page and, um, and, and you want to use that, you can just click on use existing post and then you can go through and select one of your previous posts right here. Okay, now if you go through and you're creating a new ad inside of Facebook Ads Manager, this is what's called, some people call it a blind ad. <clears throat> and the reason why it's called a blind ad is because this is actually not going to show up on your Facebook page in the news feed, right? So there's the two types. You can go make the post on your Facebook page and then use it as an existing post and use that in your ad campaign. Or if you create it inside here, it actually does not show up. And there, there's pros and cons to both. Some people don't want it to be like if you're excluding people from your Facebook page, it's only a special offer, special something for people that don't like you, your page yet, then you could do that. Um, Sometimes it's nice to have it on your Facebook page because then you get some free organic exposure, some likes and comments that you don't have to pay for. And it looks like those posts sometimes look a little bit more natural. It's not like a straight up ad because they're gonna look a little bit different. Like an ad inside of Ads Manager, you're gonna have like the headline, the sub headline, it's gonna like be like, I mean, it's gonna be like your ads that you see every day. Whereas in a post on Facebook, it's not necessarily gonna look as much like an ad and so you can kind of like almost I guess not trick people but like make them think it's not an ad it is still will say sponsored at the top but those are some quick little differences there now we'll hit these really quick just because this is a tutorial for beginners I want to give a full um, rundown of everything it's like the carousel this is we'll just kind of show they've got like the little demos right here this is where you can go through and um, you can have multiple little different images or pictures. So like this is kind of nice if you're in e-commerce and you've got like different products that they might be interested in, right? Of like, hey, we got this or this or this. And then you can just come down here and change these different ones. Um, just through here, you can add it. It could be an image or a video. One thing I've liked to do in the past with um, when I'm get, trying to get more clients is I'll do a carousel ad right like this, but also have different testimonials. So I'll like go and add four or five testimonials like, Hey, this person, this happened, or this person, this happened, this person, this happened. Like real estate, you could potentially feature multiple listings that you have, right? Where I like to typically just do one listing if I'm a real estate agent, marketing my business, but that's an option there. You do a single image ad, which I'm sure most of you guys have all seen. Um, just It's just one main core image. A single video, same type of thing, but it's just a video instead of an image. Um, slideshow. I actually have never really used slideshow, but it's like kind of just a, <clears throat> you can see like it says, create a looping video, add with up to 10 images, okay? And then um, collection right here, I've, I've never used this as well, so I'm not gonna like go speak to it, I'm not an expert on it. Feature collection of items that I'll open into a full screen mobile experience. Okay, so that, that could be cool, okay? But starting out, I would highly recommend starting out with a single image or single video. These are just the two, I guess basic simplest ones to do so let's say single image so you can come in here upload an image you can see their free stock images or browse the library I'll just see um, I don't even know what images I've got well she's like the core the main the popular profile picture I always use on everything oh so if it looks like this guys there's a tool that's called canva canva.com we'll just hit this really quick because this is important um, like this ad right here, the same thing was happening. Like this lady's head was getting like cut off. Okay, just kind of like how my head's getting cut off. So what I did on Canva is you can go through and they've got all of these um, dimensions that are already pre-built for you. Okay, so like Facebook ad, a YouTube thumbnail. This is what I use to make all my YouTube thumbnails. Um, this is the old Facebook ad, old dimensions. Facebook cover, Facebook post, Instagram post. Like all these different things. So I'll just hit this. And then what I'll do is I'll upload, you can just upload the image, it makes it really easy to upload. Okay, and let's say this is the image right here. Okay, so now if I go through and I throw it in right here, and we can make a little background. Let's see what the background should be. Maybe this cool house. Ah, that's probably not gonna fit that great. 
Um, I like this house. This is my background, actually. Okay, and obviously this is probably... Anyway. You guys can see, it's, it's pretty easy. You just, like, drag and drop everything. And then you can kind of, like, move you around and all that stuff. And then um, you can even type text. Okay, so test add. We'll change that to be white so you can see it a little bit better. You can change the font. Okay, we just maybe throw this up in the corner. And, and, and also, really quick, guys, um, if you have more than 20% text in your Facebook ad image, you're gonna get disapproved, okay? So I actually typically like to have as little text if no text as possible. So this is actually typically what I do on a YouTube thumbnail. This doesn't matter. But on, on something like this, I like to like maybe have, like maybe it's like, hey, and obviously this is not like what I do for real estate. I've got other strategies and stuff like that. But let's say if you wanna throw an image of you or somebody in there and have a little background image, and then you let your your headline and subheadline do the talking, okay? Which we'll show you guys here in a second. Now we can download this and upload it into Facebook Ads Manager. Let's just for this one, I'm just gonna browse the library. I just want to show you guys that really quick. Um, add images. We'll just use something right here that we've already got in place. I'll just use this. It's a home, right? Okay, so then we'll throw in the URL. Like, let's say for this example, we're just doing it to Google. Obviously, you're not. You're going to put in the URL of your your landing page, and, and I, I'll hit another video on, on that. But you don't want to send it to your main website or your blog. It you're you're going to waste a lot of money. You're not going to generate any leads. But obviously, it just depends on what your goal is, right? That that campaign objective up here. So if you just want people to read your blog post, then yeah, you could just send them to your your blog, right? But um, if you want to generate leads, you want to send them to a landing page, which I'll <clears throat> I'll have another video on that, but that's kind of where we want to go there. So the text right here, this, Facebook's made this pretty easy, guys. You just kind of go through, okay, what's the website you want to send people to? What's the text? You could say test, text, um, copy right here. And this is just like your main Facebook post, like what you want to say in there. You can make this as long as you want. You can make it like a long, long story. You can make it very quick. And what I like to do here, just as this is a tutorial kind of for beginners, like letting you know how I like to write my my, my copy. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. So I like to go through. First thing I like to do is call out my audience. Second thing I like to do is do something to pique their interest and to give them kind of a call to action and then add some value and then another call to action. So like, for example, um, let's say um, Orlando homeowners okay so that's calling out my audience okay so I'm targeting people in Orlando and if you're a homeowner and I can go through back in my interest and say hey I only want people that are homeowners so I can get specific but then if, if you're live in Orlando and you're a homeowner and you see Orlando homeowners that's gonna pique your attention right that's gonna be like oh hey this is for me um, you can say are you looking to sell your home in the next three to six months okay so now that's like weeding out the Orlando homeowners okay if you're not looking to sell your home you're gonna keep scrolling you're done I'm, I'm not talking to you um, so you're looking to sell your home in the next three to six months and then and obviously this I'm just creating this on the fly um, you could say like <clears throat> I like let's say I've got somebody looking to buy a home okay I have a family of three looking to purchase a home in the um, I don't know Orlando that well so we'll just say blank area so like if you were wanting to get like specific to like a, a community you know um, who is hoping to purchase their dream home within the next few months okay and then we can say like um, full details, click here. And then we can have a link. So we're gonna have the link. So if they click on this image right here, that's gonna take them to the, the site. But also, it's sometimes nice to add the link inside this copy too, because this is a reading it. A lot of times people read um, ads or anything online with their mouse. I don't, but a lot of times people do. 
And so if you're, they're going through and they're like, oh, folding is a good care, it's just easy to click, right? And so you can add, like, sometimes it can be as simple and quick, quick as that, or you can add a little bit more. Um, sometimes I typically just leave it at that. So like calling out the audience and then of those people, hey, are you looking to sell your home next three to six months? We're weaning it down. And then we're adding like, it's like a little value add. Like, hey, got, got, like if you're looking to sell, I've already got a family of three looking to purchase a home in this specific area. Obviously, you don't want to like make that up. You want to be like legit, but you want to be some value add there to get them to be like to pique their interest of like, okay, well, what separates you from all the other real estate agents of like, why would I want to sell my home with you? You know what I mean? So then um, for the headline, this is where that Google spot is going to be. We could say, are you, um, yeah, we'll just say, are you looking to sell your home? Okay, and that's going to pop up right there. And then we can say, hey, call to action, learn more. We've got several ones right here. We can say, no button. I don't want it to look like a, an ad a ton. So we're just going to say, hey, just like, are you looking to sell your home or watch more? So this is kind of depends on like what your goal is, right? <clears throat> a lot of times I will typically do just learn more just because like it, it kind of is like, it's not something of like, hey, download now or donate now or buy now or sign up or something like that. That's a little bit people put a guard up whereas learn more it's like most people are fine learning a little bit more about something right okay so we'll just actually I didn't even click that learn more so we'll leave it at that okay and then I, I typically don't hit this and then this display link you can change that if you want I typically just leave it and then a news feed link in description so we can say test um, copy right here that's gonna pop up down here as your sub headline this is the mobile view you can see mobile news feed and this is only gonna show up on your desktop newsfeed. So if we go through and we scroll and hit this, this is gonna show all the different ad placements that we chose in the ad set level, okay? So we chose news feeds. This is gonna show this one right here. Um, this is another view of it, okay? And then this is uh, what it's gonna look like on your desktop newsfeed. So I can see test copy and say, um, we can say Orlando homeowners looking to sell in the next three to six months I usually do just like a little shortened version of what I'm talking about here okay so it says Orlando homeowners looking to sell in the next three to six months um, we have a family looking to buy something like that and this is like learn more okay so just like a quick so like they're just scrolling through and they kind of skim past all this and they see this, are you looking to sell your home? Then a homeowner's looking to sell in the next few to six months. Um, we have a family looking to buy. And they're like, oh, what's this all about? Learn more, they go to, to your website, okay? And then down here, all this URL parameters, that's super advanced stuff, you don't need to mess with that. Honestly, um, I don't really mess with that even still. And I've spent a couple thousand dollars a day on Facebook. Um, so Facebook Pixel, leave that, leave this, I'll leave all that, you just hit confirm good to go okay so some other little last tidbits of things if we come over here to ads manager um, this is so like this is gonna be we'll say leave this page okay so this is taking you back to this area you can filter through stuff by lifetime you want to see everything for the whole lifetime or you can see how your campaign is just performing today or last seven days lots of times last seven days you got to keep in mind it doesn't show the day of Okay, so that's just gonna show the last seven full days or last 14 full days. A lot of times I like to look at it at the last seven days, okay, and see what it's like. So you can see I'm not running any ads. And then you can kind of mix it up and say like, okay, I wanna see it by performance or delivery. So delivery would be like how many people are being reached, right? Or engagement, how many like um, reactions, comments, shares, links, uh, like all the different information there. So you can kind of like, um, go through and scroll through what by what you want to see it and then you can see here you can see your campaigns ad sets and your ads okay so if you want to go through and say hey I want to get I want to nail down on a specific like let's say this foreclosure leads this is only going to show the ad sets that are within that campaign and then if we click on this it's going to just dive deeper so like you got campaign you clicked on so it says once selected ad sets there's only one ad set in this campaign we click on this and so it just dives deeper now we're at the ad level so there's just this one ad and if you're like crap I want to like see what it looks like I can't remember what it looks like we just hit this 
and we'll hit preview and it's gonna pop up what this looks like, okay? So we can kind of see what this looks like. If you wanna see what it looks like actually in the newsfeed, you're gonna hit hey, click on this, Let's hit Facebook post with comments and this will pop up what this actually looks like. So if you wanted to like, like it yourself right there, you could just throw in a like right there and uh, this kind of, it switches between what profiles or pages you have on your account. I've got a lot, you probably don't have as many as me. Okay, so those are some different things. And then also up here, this hamburger menu, and you hit all tools. This goes and kind of takes you in different um, aspects. So like you can create different custom audience. So like um, I've got a video on this actually where you can upload your all of your contacts into Facebook and it'll match their name, phone, and email with the name, phone, and email that they have on file with Facebook, which is kind of cool. Facebook pixels, which I've got a video on that, I'll add it here as well on tracking. So that's kind of cool. So if you guys, I'll add these videos, like if you guys click in that top section where there's like the little circle with the eye, um, I'll have some of those different videos here so you guys can kind of explore some more of these different things. Um, and then this is where you, you know set up like the billing and all that, the, the, like the admin type stuff. And so anyway, I'm not gonna hit all these things. This is just quick. Um, obviously it's a little bit longer tutorial. But anyway, if you guys want to learn something specific, that's something that I didn't cover in today's video. I hope I covered a fair amount. Um, but if there's something that I didn't cover today, make sure you guys leave a comment down below. Also, if this was helpful, um, go ahead and hit, hit like and let me know. Um, I, I wanna bring value to you guys and help you guys up as much as possible. And if you guys are not subscribed to the channel, make sure you subscribe. I try to launch a new video every single day. Um, I do my best with that, but um, I launch new videos weekly for sure on how to generate more leads, make more money, and grow your business, whether you know, you're know you a real estate agent, mortgage broker, if you're creating your marketing agency, or you wanna start marketing, you're an entrepreneur, like, it doesn't matter what business you're in, but I will go through and show you how to go through and grow things with Facebook, with social media, and how to go through and grow your business. So anyway guys, thanks so much for watching today, and um, hope you guys all have an amazing day.